Well, hi everyone, Corey Barker here wishing you all happy holidays and to celebrate the holidays I'm going to be preparing a number of different holiday themed tutorials for the next few weeks up until Christmas. So be looking, um, be on the lookout for those coming up very soon. Now this particular effect I want to share with you today is something that I stumbled upon as a really kind of a happy accident. I was looking to try and achieve a snow falling effect to try and improve upon an effect I had done a couple of years ago where I had uh, created the snow and then used layer styles and keyframe animation to create this kind of uh, snow falling effect. And then I even used a displacement map to kind of cre um, distort the snow as it was falling. Worked pretty good and it looked great, but I wanted to take it a step further and really get something really realistic. And I wanted to be able to do that utilizing 3D here inside Photoshop CC. So the result is quite impressive. I was actually blown away when, I, uh, when it first revealed itself and I was just seeing it. I was just played it through and I was like, whoa. And it's just one of those moments where you're like, you really discover something that um, once you do, you're like, oh, what can I do with this? So, if you have Photoshop CC or even CS6, you can try this in, um, in the, with the 3D features in CS6, it should work as well. But, let's go ahead and get started. So, I'm going to start with a document here, and it's, uh, I'm probably going to go a little fast here because there's a lot to cover, and uh, this is really kind of an advanced tutorial, so you need to make sure you're familiar with, um, with Photoshop and Photoshop 3D. Um, but go ahead and just start and stop it at your leisure as you go. But I'm just going to keep on uh, going until, um, until we get to the end here. So, begin by creating a new document. Now, this document I'm working with is actually 1,200 pixels by 600 pixels. And I'm going to start by going and grabbing my lasso tool here. I'm going to go ahead and create a new blank layer. And what I want to draw is a simple abstract shape. Now, when it comes to abstract shapes, I often end up doing it two or three times before I actually get what I'm looking for. So, I'm just going to start by just drawing a shape. And that's not bad, but I think I'm going to do it again. Let's do something like this. No, perhaps not. Let's try it one more time. I think that, no, no. When you, it's funny when you're talking about abstract shapes, you know, you, you know what you don't want, but you don't know exactly what you do want until you actually see it. So that's the funny thing about it. All right, I think this one will work just fine. So I'm going to go ahead and fill that selected area with a base color 50% gray there. There we go. Now, go to the 3D menu and go in here and choose New 3D Extrusion from Selected Layer. Now, you'll notice that it goes ahead and extrudes the object. If I change my angle of view here, you can see the object extruded. Let's actually push it back so we can see what's going on here. Now, I do not need the ground plane shadow, which is on by default. So I'm going to go into the Properties panel um, after I select Environment here in the 3D panel. Go down here to the pro or go up here to the properties panel and take the ground plane shadow opacity to zero. So we won't have to conflict with that. So now I'm going to reselect layer one here in the 3D panel and go back up to the properties panel and take the extrusion depth all the way to its max setting, which is 2500. And you can see it pushes the object back even further. Now, with that object still selected, I'm going to go into the deform section, which is the second tab here in the properties panel. And you'll notice we've got a number of different distortion properties we can apply. The first one I'm going to do is actually the taper. I'm just going to take the taper and bring it to a lower setting. And you'll see it makes that back end a little bit smaller. If I were to rotate the object around, you can see it just kind of shrinks the other end of the object there. And let's take it down a little bit further. Oh, something like that. I think that'll do. All right. And then I'm going to go into the twist setting right here, and you can see I can twist the object. I'm just going to do it somewhere around 200. I think will be fine for what we're looking for here. And you can see that's my object right there. So it's just this twisted abstract shape. Now, I don't need this front face of this um, object, the original shape here. So I'm going to select layer one front inflation here in the 3D panel. And then up in the properties panel, I'm going to bring the opacity setting to zero. You can see it makes it disappear. So now let's slide this object closer to us and let's just tilt the view here and then adjust and we'll just kind of bring this closer here, something like that. Now, we want to be really close in on the object and I know, know it's kind of distracting right now, but it all makes sense in just a moment. So let's go into the 3D panel again and this time we're going to select layer one extrusion material which is the side this extruded side that we're looking at right now 
So with that highlighted in the 3D panel, I'm gonna jump up to the Properties panel, and here in the Diffuse Properties, I'm gonna go in here and choose Edit Texture. Now, you'll notice it has no base fill, it just fills it with a default gray when it doesn't have a base color fill. I'm gonna go ahead and fill this with white, and then close it and save the changes, and you can see the color change on the object. Now I'm gonna jump over to the Opacity setting, again here in, this, in the Layer 1 Extrusion Material, click on the folder icon and choose New Texture. Now the file we want to create, I'm just going to make it the same size as the original document, which was 1200 by 600, as you can see right there. So we'll go ahead and click OK. So now let's go back in that menu and choose Edit Texture. Now we're working on this Opacity file. Now an Opacity um, texture file on a 3D object functions the same way a layer mask does on a regular 2D uh, layer meaning that anything that's white is going to reveal um, what's ever on that um, surface. Whatever is black is going to hide it, and then anything gray will have transparency. So I'm immediately going to go ahead and invert this image by pressing Command-I, and that's going to invert the uh, white background to black. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new blank layer, and go ahead and give it a base fill of 50% gray. Now, let's go to the Filter menu and add Noise. So we're going to Filter, Noise and choose Add Noise. Now make sure your default colors are set here in the toolbar. Just simply press D on the keyboard before you uh, apply the filter. So here in the Add Noise filter, we're going to set this the amount to the maximum 400%, and then uh, Distribution set to Gaussian and Monochromatic is checked on. So we'll go ahead and click OK. Then go to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur. Give it a very small blur, about two pixels will be plenty, and we'll go ahead and click OK there. Then we're going to go to Image, Adjustments, Levels. And we're going to apply a little bit of a Levels Adjustment. I say a little bit, it's actually a horrendous Levels Adjustment to this. We're going to take the Shadow Slider here and push it all the way near to the middle, and the Highlight Slider bring it to the middle as well. And I'm just going to boost this up until we get what looks like random varying sizes of little snowflakes here, as you can see right there. And this is how I created the snow element in that pre, um, the previous tutorial I had done on creating falling snow, just like this. All right, so once we have that, it looks pretty good. I'll go ahead and click OK. So now we have our snow pattern. Here's what I want to do, though. I want to be able to animate this as a layer style, so I need to make it a seamless pattern. So, in order to create a seamless pattern, we need to first offset the object so we can edit the edges. So go to the Filter menu, go to Other, and choose Offset. Now you'll notice with these numbers here, I've got the offsetting going, the tiling is right here in the center, so we can see these lines here which represent the edges. So go ahead and click OK there. And to fix this, I'm just going to go in here into the toolbar and get the Patch Tool which is grouped with the spot healing brush here. And it's going to draw a selection around this horizontal element and just drag up and it's going to sample the other areas and you can see those lines pretty much disappear by using that patch healing brush right there. Now we have a pretty much seamless pattern. So go ahead and use, into the edit menu, go down here and choose define pattern and it's going to go ahead and save that to Photoshop. And then we'll go ahead and create a new blank layer in this file. Give it a base color fill. Again, 50% gray, normal, 100%. There we go. Double click on the layer to open up the layer style panel. And we're going to apply our snow image via a pattern overlay. So check on pattern overlay. Go into the pattern menu here. And check on the very last item, which is the snow that we just defined here. There it is. Now notice, while the layer style panel is open and I move it to the side here, I can move that pattern around and it looks pretty much seamless because we took care of those edges as you saw a moment ago. Okay, so for now let's click OK. Now we're going to animate the snow in this, in this mask file. Yes, you can actually do pretty much anything you can do in any other Photoshop document on these texture and opacity files that you have attached to your, to your 3D objects. So. Go into the window menu, go down here and choose Timeline. And I'm going to go ahead and just create a video timeline here. There's our layers. If I twirl down, you can see that we can animate, by default, the position, opacity, and style. Style is actually what we uh, want to animate in this case because we've applied our pattern as a layer style. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the stopwatch here and set a keyframe 
at the beginning of this animation. Then I'm going to move the playhead to the five second mark at the end of the animation here. And then jump into that layer style again and just move this panel over and then just move it up. I'm actually going to click the bottom of the document and then slightly at an angle, just drag it up a little bit, like that. And that's it. I'm going to click OK. You can see that it has added the keyframe because we, we changed the state of the um, animation. And if we move through this, you'll see that there is the snow going through there. Now, it doesn't look like snow. It just looks like a kind of a noisy pattern just traveling across the image. However, I'm going to press Command S and save my document. And if I move this down and look at our 3D object, Notice what we have now. Now we have kind of a falling snow element. Now, right at this moment, it does tend to look like it's in a pattern wrapping around the 3D object. You can almost make out that shape of that 3D object. And this is where I was stumped whenever I was trying to generate this effect. I'm like, well, it's almost there, but it doesn't quite look right. It still looks like it's just kind of wrapping around the object here. I can move the 3D object around a little bit and try and get a different angle which is great because it's a 3D object. I can just kind of do something like this. Maybe rotate it down and then move it up. Trying different things like that. And that, that looks pretty good. Here's the trick though. If you go and have that current view selected in your 3D panel, jump up to the properties panel and you'll notice we have the depth of field settings here. Highlight the depth and set one and then press enter. Notice the state of the snow now. It changed because now we have depth of field. So if I go back over here and then to the beginning of the timeline and press play, you'll notice that we're getting this rather realistic snow falling effect. Now it looks jumpy at the moment because it's doing a render. It's actually rendering these frames. And let's actually shorten our work area here because right now the timeline is 10 seconds but we know our animation only goes to five seconds so we'll shorten that area and we'll play it again now it's gonna let that render through and when you see it playing back in full motion and it's gonna automatically loop the animation once it finishes the render and you'll start to see that we have this very realistic snow falling effect here it comes just wait a second this is that aha moment uh, I had when I was stumbling upon this effect I was like whoa and here we go and look at that because we're close to the object objects appear to be coming closer to us and moving away and moving in random directions and that's because it's animating along the um, 3d object there so i could obviously tweak it by adjusting the twisting of the 3d object but i think hopefully you get the idea of what we're trying to what we're doing here and that looks pretty good now I'm going to go ahead and do that another render. And we'll just go ahead and let that render through because now I'm going to add it to a, an actual image. Let's let that right. Notice it's that depth of field that really makes the big difference here um, as far as the realism of it because you see particles that are in focus and then other elements that are not in focus. And that really adds to the uh, realism of it. And then the movement of it certainly. Um, says that it is like realistic falling snow there. There we go. How cool is that? So now all I want to do is I'm just going to go ahead and just contain this 3D layer into a smart object. And then let's open up a file here. I've got this rather happy Christmas home here. And no, it is not my house. And everybody in the office here is asking me, is that your house? Is that your house? I'm like, no, it's not my house. I don't get that ambitious with uh, Christmas decorations as much as I would like to. I just don't have the time. But it's a great candidate for this particular effect. So I'm going to take this smart object layer and drag and drop it over. Minimize that. And let's go ahead and scale it so it will fit fully in this document here. And if I go and bring up the timeline and press play. And again, it's going to do the render like it did before. And when, it, when it's completed, because of the depth of field and the lighting on the 3D object, it's going to give you a very realistic snow falling effect in just a moment. Now, what you can do is, of course, make duplicates of the smart object layer and reposition them even further back in space so that it looks like there's snow falling all in the, um, all in the area of this image here. But once this renders and starts to play back, you're going to really see um, how realistic 
this really comes out. So it's almost done with the render here and just a moment here and there we go. And there we have snow falling in the neighborhood. So you can see how <clears throat> it's really just one of those things I stumbled upon. I was like, man, this is so cool. I wonder what I could do with it. There you have it. Getting that random snow particle effect entirely using Photoshop CC and 3D.